47. Thank you. 
there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. What am I God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. do have a couple quick announcements that I do want to pass along. Uh, men, we have a sign-up sheet for breakfast. Uh, next Sunday is Baptist Men's Day. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet for breakfast out here in the, in the vestibule here. So if you'll please sign that so we can get a count of about how many is coming. Uh, and looking forward to that. Uh, Randy, you do such a good job cooking, I can't wait. Yeah, that's you. You're the only one sitting back there. <laughs> can't wait for breakfast. And I just want to say thank you for what you do to help that day go well. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, next Sunday, we will be pleased to have uh, Sean Ames with us as our speaker. Uh, Sean Ames, he's with the uh, Southern Baptist Conservatives of Virginia. Uh, he is a regional coordinator, plus he also uh, heads up the disaster relief missions for the SBCV. So we are so pleased to have him come and give our message uh, next week. Uh, looking ahead, mark your calendars for February 17th. Uh, that's going to be our Valentine's Stew Banquet. Now, we do have a few things that we need to, to talk about with that. Uh, the quarts, because of the price of ingredients, will be $10. Um, there's no way we can get around that. But what we want to do is we want to give the church first opportunities for the quarts. So out here beside the men's breakfast, there is a sign-up sheet uh, for quarts. So if you could just write down your name and how many quarts and we can get an idea of how many quarts we need to pre uh, prepare ahead of time, you know, for that, uh, we'd appreciate it. Uh, you know, probably about a couple weeks, you know, we're going to open it up to the public. Uh, so please go ahead and sign up as quick as you can, you know, for that. Uh, there is some uh, price changes that we've had to make also for that. Uh, be seven dollars for the bowl and children will be five dollars for that uh, and again all proceeds go to our missions I just want to say thank you so much for the support that you give with that uh, also on the back of your bulletin you'll notice another new feature that we have we started last week by praying for our neighbors across the street uh, we have another round of neighbors that I'd like for y'all to pray for this week uh, this round starts right over here at this house, 609 Woodlawn Court, right here at the corner, and it carries on over here on Gilliland. Uh, it doesn't include Pam, but it, it starts at Kathy. She's the White House over here, and it goes down that way. Uh, just asking y'all to pray for them. Uh, pray for them that either if they know Jesus, that their faith will be increased and that they will serve their church well, or if they do not know Christ, pray that the Holy Spirit makes them miserable until they hear the gospel message and decide to come to Christ. 
So that is going to be something that we will have in the bulletin every week uh, from here on out, and it will be a rotating list of names for our neighbors right in our very own vicinity around here. There's about 38 to 40, 40 households that I'm in contact with, uh, and that's who we, who we will be praying for. Uh, where I have some praises and some prayer requests we do want to pass along to you. Uh, first, uh, we do want to remember uh, Miss Juanita. Uh, Miss Juanita was supposed to go to Roanoke about 11.30 Friday night. Uh, it was later than that when she left. Uh, she was in transit in the middle of the night. At 9.30, she was in pre-op, uh, and by lunchtime, she had had a partial hip replacement. Uh, she is still in uh, Roanoke Carillion. Uh, I'm going to hopefully find out today or tomorrow when, what the plan is about when she may be able to come back to Danville. I know initially the plan was for her to go to rehab and then go back home, uh, but I want to check to make sure that all that's in place before I, before I let you all know. But please keep them, and her and her family in your prayers. Uh, we also want to keep Miss Elizabeth in our prayers. Uh, she's doing okay. She's got some good days, some bad days, and let her know we're praying that somebody can't go to their appointment so she can go soon. Uh, so keep her in your prayers. We also want to remember Lee Glasgow. Uh, he had back surgery on Thursday, so please keep him in your prayers as he's recovering from that. Uh, we also want to remember uh, James Murphy. Uh, he was supposed to have some tests at Duke last week, but he couldn't. Uh, they've drawn off a, a lot of fluid. Uh, he is back at Duke today uh, to, for a procedure. As it stands now, it looks like that he is going to have to have two heart valves uh, replaced. Uh, so please keep them in your prayers uh, for that. Uh, we also want to keep uh, Wayne Covington in our prayers. He has some eye surgery coming up. Uh, so please keep him in your prayers. Uh, we also want to keep uh, Miss Rachel's family uh, in, in our prayers. Uh, she passed last week and was laid to rest on Wednesday. Uh, we do have a, a big praise we want to pass along to you. Uh, Gwen's mom, Patsy Griffin, uh, she made the move from uh, her house to an independent living apartment um, in Charlottesville, right? Yes. Uh, the move went fine. Uh, matter of fact, she was there in time to get her hair done. Uh, so we just want to pray for a smooth transition, you know, for that. Uh, and I know there's other needs that we have. We do want to remember those. I'd also ask that you remember what I've been asking you to pray for. Pray that we have four baptisms this year. Pray that at least four people will hear the gospel message will respond to the gospel message, and they will be baptized this year. Pray that our church can be involved in the spreading of the gospel message. We did a lot last year, and I'll be honest, I was shocked. Outside of our regular worship service, we had over a thousand contacts with different things that we did with the special events. Over a thousand different contacts with church members and non-church members. So we either encouraged somebody in their faith or we encouraged somebody to come to faith. And let me tell you, God will honor that. So let's keep doing that. Let's keep encouraging the membership and encouraging those that don't know Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you, Lord, and we are just so grateful for what you have done for us. Father, we are in awe, Lord, that you even chose us. Lord, that in rebellion, we turned our backs on you, but you came and you sought us out. And Lord, we are so grateful for that. And Lord, we just want to lift up these praises and these prayer requests to you. Father, we pray for those in our community, Lord, that, that need to know you. 
Father, we pray that right now, Lord, you will just rain down your Holy Spirit upon them, Lord, and that you will either encourage the Christians, Lord, to be more faithful and active, or, Lord, that you will prick the hearts of those that don't know you so that they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. And, Father, we thank you for those right around us. Lord, and we just want to lift them to you as well. And, Father, pray specifically for them. Lord, we pray for our neighbors, and, Lord, that they will hear your message. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful move that you've let Miss Griffin take place on. Father, we thank you for the safety, and we thank you that everything was, was accomplished that needed to be. And Father, we pray for her, Lord, as she is settling in now to a, to a new place with new people. Father, that you will encourage her, and Lord, that you will just give her peace and comfort where she's at right now. Father, for Rachel's family, we lift them to you, Lord, as they are mourning her loss. And Father, we mourn too, but Lord, we also realize that she is now with you, whole and complete. And Father, we thank you for the opportunities we had, Lord, to know her and for how she has encouraged us. Father, we want to lift Miss Juanita to you. And Father, we pray for her and her recovery. Father, we pray that she will be able to come home very soon. And Lord, we pray that this surgery will, will heal quick. Lord, we just want to lift Miss Elizabeth to you. And Father, we just pray for her. And Lord, we pray that she will be able to get in sooner to the doctors. And Lord, that she will be able to, Lord, just to return to, to normal life. Father, we do pray for Lee. And Lord, we just pray that you will just... Lord, heal him from this surgery that he's had. And Lord, for James, we lift him to you. Father, we thank you for getting him the care that he needs. And Father, we pray that as they are there right now, Father, that this procedure will be a success. Father, we pray that he will be able to get these valves taken care of. And Father, we pray that he will again be able to return and sit amongst us. Lord, we miss him. And Father, I know that he misses us. And Father, we pray that you will heal him. And Lord, that you will comfort his family as they go through this time. And Father, we want to lift Wayne to you. And Father, we pray for him for this upcoming surgery. Father, we pray that... It would do the things it needs to do. And Lord, that he will be out very soon. And Lord, we thank you for this time that we have. Lord, not just that we can come before you, but God, so that we can hear you and we can experience you, we can be changed by you so that we become better reflections of you. In your name we pray, amen. Before the special music comes up, there is one quick announcement that I forgot to make that I want to make sure everybody is aware of. Uh, we canceled the business meeting last Wednesday night. We will hold it this Wednesday in the Fellowship Hall. So mark your calendars, business meeting this Wednesday night in the Fellowship Hall. <clears throat> Enough of this. Let's praise God from whom all praises flow. Can I say a praise word? Yes. All right. Yes. You know, we serve a mighty God, and we are so grateful to hear that, Kathy. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. 
this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What eyes of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on the cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. There is one other thing that I forgot, and it's a good thing I, I have my wife to remind me of this. Uh, 10 years ago this morning, I remember that because about 12.30 at night, I heard it's time. And so if you've ever tried to gather up two small boys and a pregnant wife to rush them to the hospital at 12.30 at night. You know what an adventure that is. Well, Anna stuck around for another few hours. And then about 6.30 that morning, we welcomed Anna to the world. And about 6.32, she started talking. <laughs> and you know how that's gone. <laughs> But today is her birthday, and we are so happy that God gave us that little girl for our life. So just want to say happy birthday, Anna. Take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Jude. And remember, if you blink, you will miss it. And if you sneeze, you will turn the page with it. It is a very short book. But it is one that, as I have gotten into it, it is so important 
for us today. Because the whole purpose of Jude was to remind the church to stand on the teachings of the apostles so that they could spot error and get the error out of the church. And my friends, that's still important for us today. But today we get to a, a happier part. We'll be looking in Jude 17 through 25. And I call this part the remember portion. We had two portions to where he is telling us to beware. And now he tells us to remember. Listen to what the word of God says. But you, dear friends, remember what was predicted by the apostles of our Lord Jesus. They told you in the end time there will be scoffers living according to their own ungodly desires. These people create divisions and are worldly, not having the spirit. But you, dear friends, as you build up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting expectantly for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Have mercy on those who waver. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Have mercy on others but with fear, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy, to the only God and Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, we thank you so much for this little letter. Father, we thank you for the power that you gave Jude. We thank you that you have preserved it. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you teach us today, Lord, what it is to remember and what it is to give praise. In your name we pray, amen. You know, as we have gone through this book, there are certain things we have seen we have learned that Satan is still actively trying to shipwreck our faith by using people within the church. We have seen that people have snuck in. Some have even been invited in. And they have diluted the truth with error and have led people astray. And Jude for 16 verses, has been telling us to stand up and contend for the true faith. And today we are learning that Jude is telling us to protect ourselves. And to protect ourselves, we need to remember what we have been taught and who taught us. We need to protect ourselves and the church by being vigilant vigilant I think the, the frost has got to my tongue right now and we need to praise God for all he has done and why do we need to do this because there will always be those who seek to lead Christians astray Christians need to be grounded and to protect themselves and the church and how do we do that he tells us in verses 17 through 19, and that is to remember. He says, remember what was predicted by the apostles. He starts out with that word predicted. And that's so important because the apostles looked forward to give warning. Well, who were the apostles? Warren Wiersbe said this, while our Lord had many disciples, he selected only a few to be apostles. The word means one who was sent with a commission. In order to qualify, a believer had to be a witness of the resurrection of Christ. 
The apostles lived with Christ during his ministry, learned from him, and were sent by him into all the world to carry the good news of salvation. And I want you to understand, because of that biblical definition, that is why I am so leery of people who call themselves apostles today. Because the Bible makes it very clear to be called an apostle means that you have seen the risen Christ. So I'm not saying that they might, might have. God does work in some very mysterious ways. But I am saying this. I have seen some who call themselves apostles that I would much rather listen to somebody in jail for lying than to listen to their teaching. There have been people that have taken that title upon themselves that do not know who Jesus is and are proclaiming a gospel that comes from them, not from the word. At church, we need to be leery about that. Well, why is it so important that we listen to the apostles? Because when the church assembled the New Testament books, one of the requirements was that it had to be written either by an apostle or someone closely related to the apostle. Apostolic teaching was and still is the test of truth. When you look through the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and John were what? Disciples of Jesus Christ. Mark was who? Mark was with Paul on the missionary journeys. And there is some tradition, church tradition, that tells us that the gospel of Mark may be Peter's recollection that Mark wrote down. We look at most of the New Testament. And who wrote most of the New Testament? Paul. The Pharisee who went to jail Christians, who met Jesus, to the one who was taking the lost and making them into Christians because he saw the risen Christ. We have Peter, the disciple who suffered from athlete's mouth because he put it in his mouth so much. But he loved his Savior so much that when he was crucified, he says, I do not deserve to be crucified like my Savior. Crucify me upside down. And he was. There is debate about the writer of Hebrews. An argument can be made for Paul, and that's why it was included in the New Testament. We've got James, the brother of Jesus, who was head of the Jerusalem church. And we also have his brother Jude, who has given us this letter. Every single one of those writers is connected in some way to Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible is so important. Because we need to know who said it, why they said it, and we can look back on their lives and see the impact that it had. See, that was so important for the early church. They looked back and they saw the difference that the risen Christ made in those disciples. They said, I would rather have that than what I've got right now. And what did these disciples say about the scoffers that were coming? Peter tells us in 2 Peter 3, Above all, beware of this. Scoffers will come in the last days, scoffing and following their own evil desires. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, And now the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are are seared. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods that God created to be received with gratitude by those who believe and know the truth. He again says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, but know this, hard times will come in the last days, for people will be 
Hold on, because you're going to see a lot of what's happening in our society in this. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people, for among them are those who worm their way into households and deceive gullible women overwhelmed by sins and led astray by a variety of passions, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so those also resist the truth. They are men who are corrupt in mind and worthless in regard to the faith, but they will not make any further progress, for their foolishness will be clear to all, as was the foolishness of Janus and Jambres. First John tells us this, children, it is the last hour, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. By this we know that this is the last hour. So what are they telling us? They're telling us that people are coming in to deceive us and to lead us astray and that we are to be aware. And how are we to be aware of it? By knowing the teachings that have been given to us. And how do we know the teachings that have been given to us? Membership matters. You see, we come to church not just to learn about God, but to learn about God so that we can be protected by God when we run into falsehood. And you see, those that deny what the Bible is will lead you straight into falsehood. Mark my words. You know, I don't see this statistic much anymore. But I can tell you this. In the 1970s, you know what the fastest growing cult was? Mormonism. Now, in the 70s and early 80s, do you know where most of the converts to Mormonism came from? Southern Baptist churches. I belonged to a church when I was about Will's age. I didn't understand it then, but as I look back on it now, I understand that they were denying the truth of the Bible when they tried to deny Jesus casting out demons. We still have churches today that deny the Bible. Do you know where Thomas Jefferson's Bible ends? It ends when he's put in the tomb because he did not believe in the resurrection. My friends, we must be careful who we listen to, what we put in our heads, because what goes in is going to affect what comes out. If we put garbage in, we're going to get garbage out. If we have put garbage in and we start putting truth in, guess what still comes out for a little while? The garbage. 
because it's got to get out of you. But once it's out of you, you got the truth flowing through you. That's why we need to know this Bible. That's why it is important for us to realize who it is that wrote it, why they wrote it, and why we need to understand it. Because if we deny what the Bible says, Satan's laughing at us, saying there's one that I can mark, and you don't want to be marked. And so what do we look for? What do we look for when we're looking for these false teachers? We look for divisions. And what's a division? Just means you separate it. These are people that come amongst our church in order to separate the church. We have to be aware. Now, does that mean we agree on everything? Oh, no. It does not mean that we agree on everything. But it means that we are respectful enough to understand the entirety of the word, to listen to it. Look, I'm smart enough to understand that there are some things in here that God may have revealed to you in a little different way, but so long as it does not move away from what Scripture teaches, it's applying to you and what you're going through. But we do need to divide over the, what we need to divide over. Somebody says Jesus is not God, they need to go. Somebody says the resurrection didn't happen, they got to go. If somebody denies that this is the word of God, they got to go. If somebody says 10,000 10, angels can dance on the head of a pen, come on, stay. There's debate for that. But we look for those that come in to make division, to drive people away. We also look for worldliness. And this word in the Greek means sensual. It means that these people rely on what they feel because they have not been regenerated by the Holy Spirit. They have not been regenerated because they have not submitted to Jesus. These people do what feels good to them. You know, I used to really, really like the Debbie Boone song, You Light Up My Life. You know, for a long time it was considered a Christian song. Have you ever listened to the last line of that song? I mean, the very last line. If it feels so good, it's got to be right. No. No. That's worldliness. Because let me tell you, sin feels good, but it's certainly going to lead you astray. It's going to lead you to wanting more and more until you cannot fill it up. We need to watch out for people that want us to fill ourselves with pleasure instead of the Word of God. And we watch out for spiritless. See, the only spirit they have within them is that of the world. And they're not sensitive to the Holy Spirit because they have not been regenerated by the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to remember what we're taught. Because what have we been taught? The gospel in a nutshell. We are sinners Christ came to save us. And if we submit to him because of what he did at the cross and in the empty grave, he will change us by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And he will come for us again. And so we need to remember all that 
so that we can protect. We protect ourselves and we protect others. And we see this in verses 20 through 23. The first thing Jude talks about there is, is protecting yourselves. And how do you protect yourselves? The first thing you do is you need to build your faith. You need to build it. You know, we had a house that we tried to sell for a long time. And that house stood and was pretty good so long as somebody was living in it. What happens when you have a house and nobody lives in it? It ages quick. It ages very quick. And we were shocked when we went to go clean up that house and nobody had been living in it for about a month at how bad it was. My friends, that is us. We are a house of the Holy Spirit. God dwells within us. <laughs> but if we turn our backs on him, guess what happens? We run down quicker. We're stunted. And how do we build our faith? It's very simple. We have a regular diet of the Bible. We have a regular diet of prayer. And we have a regular diet of meeting together. And we do all of this because membership matters. Not just in the church, but in the family of God. You matter to God that he sent Jesus Christ to fulfill your sin debt and your death debt. And when you take his name upon you, you're saying, Lord, I will do what you want me to do. So we build our faith and we pray. Prayer is the power for building our Christian life. And the more we pray, guess what happens? Sometimes the more power we get. <laughs> but sometimes the more we pray, the more things seem to happen to us. You know, we can have all the power we want from the power company to come to our house. But it doesn't do a lick of good until you throw that main breaker and allow that power to come into your house. Don't treat prayer like that breaker and have it turned off and wonder why you can't warm yourself, why you can't have lights. And we wait expectantly. That word expectantly uh, means that we are just having no time but, but to wait on it, but it is a greatness that we're doing. And what he's wanting to remind us is that Jude, excuse me, that Jesus wants to take time to grasp us. And after he grasps us, he wants to clean us. And after that, he wants to lead us. Because as he does that, we become new creatures. But he also wants to do that so that we can have mercy on others. You see, we are put here to give the gospel message. We are put here to lead people to Christ. And sometimes we lead them to Christ by empathizing with who they are, what they've gone through. So we reach out to them. Then he goes on to say we save by snatching. And that word snatching there is to take them by force. That means that we are contend for others forcefully by our church family and our families, which means that we need to intervene with others, which means, I'm about to say those two words again, membership matters. It matters that we belong to a family it matters so that we can look to each other, not just for guidance, but for protection and help. 
And then we, after we save, then we separate. Now that word save is, is a neat word. It means to rescue and preserve from that spiritual death which is common to all men because of Adam's sin. Jude is reminding us that this is the great commission to go into all the world and tell others of the good news of salvation. And as people are confronted with that truth, then they will have to make a decision about that truth. And there's only two decisions they can make. We're not responsible for their decisions. We're responsible for telling them the truth. And the decisions they make is either I will follow Jesus or I will not follow Jesus. But we are called to take that to them. And then once they have been saved, we separate them. Now that, that word separate is the idea that we need to hate how the flesh stains that which is close to us. You know, I told you last week of how I, I would stain new jeans with grass stains, and Mom was so excited about that. You know, and if I was lucky enough to get the tough skins, y'all remember tough skins pants? You know, your knees would wear out before the pants would wear out. I was in trouble if I got those stained because I was doomed. But the idea here is that we separate from that which stains. And when we are saved and when we rescue our slipping brothers and sisters, we need to encourage them to stay away from whatever caused them to slip away from the faith. We are encouragement. We are guide rails. We don't drive the car, but we show the path that the car needs to take. And then we praise him. I love the way that Jude closes this little letter. You see, we praise God for what he does. And what does God do you? God protects you. See, God has always promised to protect and preserve those who submit to him. He says so in Psalm 92. The righteous thrive like a palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They thrive in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, healthy and green, to declare the Lord is just. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. God protects you. God will empower you. And this is done by the Holy Spirit who lives within you, because that Holy Spirit brings the conviction of sin and unrighteousness so that we can confess our sins to God. That Holy Spirit teaches teaches us the word of God because he commissioned the writing of the Bible from beginning to end so he knows how to reveal what you need to know at the time you need to know it. And he empowers us through him as we learn to follow him. God protects us. God empowers us. God gives us joy. And that word joy means wild, ecstatic joy. I'm not talking like Dallas Cowboy Joy from last week. I might be talking about the Virginia Tech Joy from yesterday. But we are talking about this overflowing that we have. You know, as an NC State fan, our memory goes back 41 years. Why 41 years? I still remember the Lorenzo Charles dunk. And man, was I ecstatic with that. That's what he's talking about. When we're just overfilled because something has happened that we didn't expect. And you see, God gives us many reasons to be that ecstatic. Here's just a few of them. The first is we do not get what we deserve. Because what do we deserve? Death and hell. That's not my words. That's written in the book. We 
are ecstatic because we get to see him change us. Change us from who we were to who we are, and we get to look forward to who we will be. My friends, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, and you're still where you were when you accepted Christ, something's wrong. God has called us to grow with him in a relationship. And we get to see the change that occurs. And another reason is that we get to see him use us in ways that we didn't even know. And we get to be excited because God chose us to move this, to show this, to do this. So we praise God for what he does. We also praise God for who he is. And who is he? He is the only God, the creator of the universe, who became our savior. Jesus, who saves his people from guilt and power of sin and from eternal death, from punishment and misery as the consequences of sin. He saves us. The creator became the created to save you and me. To bring us back into a right relationship with him. And how did he do that? Through Jesus Christ. The creator became the created in the form of Jesus Christ to redeem his creation. To redeem you. To redeem me. He is going to redeem this entire earth at the end of the age. That's something to praise him for. The Lamb of God who took our sin and our death penalty so that we can live eternally with him. And how do we praise him? We praise him with glory. That word there in the Greek means an exalted state, a blissful perfection that believers will have in heaven. I thank the Lord that the me I am now is not going to be the me in heaven. You know, I can walk by a buffet and I put on five or ten pounds. I can't wait to get to heaven and walk by that buffet. And guess what? I don't have to worry about being a spokesman for Owens Corning. You know that? God is going to perfect my body the way it should have been in the beginning. I'm going to have that perfect body. Free of sin, free of sickness. The way it was supposed to be with Adam and Eve. I'm going to praise him because of his majesty, because of his strength and his splendor. And there in heaven, what are we going to do? We are going to see him in all of his glory because we can't see him now. What did Moses have to do to see God? God had to put him in the cleft of the rock, put his hand over him, and Moses could only see his back. My friends, when we get to heaven, we can praise him because we will see him face to face in all of his majesty, in all of his power. Because not only we see his majesty over everything, but we will see his dominion over everything. We praise him because he has authority over all things. And though it doesn't look like it right now, I take solace in the word because Romans tells me that he has placed the leaders, whether we agree with them or not, he has placed the leaders in position. God is still in control. Now we question some of the choices. But we remember that he is in control and he has authority over persons and he will have authority over what they do and what they say. 
and I exalt him for that. And we will praise him now and forever because he is, he always has been, and he always will be God Almighty. So now that we've come to the end of Jude, what do we take away from it? Several things I want us to walk out of here remembering. The first is that once we begin to question God's words, we are vulnerable to Satan's other attacks, for only the truth of the word can protect us from the lies of the devil. We need to remember Isaiah 8.20. Go to God's instruction and testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, there will be no dawn for them. Put all of what you hear from leaders through the filter of the Bible. The second thing is, to be a follower, you must be under authority. Leaders are made. And they're made by following. The third thing is, I want you to understand, is that people walk away from the faith because they do not want God to tell them how to live. They want to satisfy their own sinful desires, and the word of God condemns their sinful way of life. When a person says, I have an intellectual problem with the Bible, he or she probably has moral problems because the Bible contradicts what they are doing. The only sure way to know the truth of the Bible is by obeying it. People don't like what God says because it messes up what they want to do. We have seen this from the very beginning. We see it today and we will see it until God judges all of sin in this world. The fourth thing I want you to take away from this study is that the word of God encourages spiritual growth and the power for, of growth comes from prayer. If we want to know more, we must pray more because that hooks us into the Holy Spirit who has preserved the word of God so the children of God can learn from God himself. And the last thing I want us to take away is this. The purpose of salvation is not simply to rescue sinners from hell, as wonderful as that is. The grand purpose is that God may be glorified for all eternity. We glorify God by being obedient to him. My friends, as we have gone through these 25 verses, I hope that your idea of Jude has changed. And I hope that you come back to Jude more and more often for encouragement to remember what we've been taught, to flee from those that want to separate us from God and to praise him from whom all blessings flow. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you so much for this day that you've given us. And Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for having us remember of what your word is, of what it is supposed to be, of how it teaches us. And Heavenly Father, I thank you that, that you have given it to us so that we remember. And Lord, I pray that you will use it to encourage us. May we be your example to a world that needs to see you. In your name we pray, amen. Stand with us please, page 
as we prepare to go, remember what God has done for you, what God has done through you, so that you can be that protection for your family, for your Sunday school class, for your church, and praise him because he deserves praise. And we're going to close the service up by singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below.